Hi everyone, it's Taryn with Crafty Karma, and today I wanted to show you how I made these fun, light up mason jar crafts using Chivitronics. To start out, you'll need a mason jar, conductive fabric or copper tape, 3 to 7 Chivitronics LED stickers, a 3 volt coin battery, foam tape, scissors, glue, washi tape if you have a metal cap, but painter's tape works too, a sharpie, and whatever figurines and scenery you want to use on the inside. Optional materials include Chivitronics pressure sensitive plastic, a small square of fabric that can comfortably fit over the cap of your jar, and ribbon. Now that we have everything we need, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is design our scene inside the mason jar. This part is really up to you, but I would recommend making a sketch or a rough draft before putting everything into your final mason jar. Also, make sure that everything you want to add fits in the jar. Here, I'm going to be making a woodland squirrel scene. So I have moss, trees, rocks, mushrooms, and these adorable squirrel figurines. Once you have a good idea of what you want to do, you can start assembling things in place in the mason jar. Feel free to experiment with placement and don't feel like you have to glue everything down right away. Once you're satisfied with the placement inside the jar, it's time for this super cool part. Constructing the circuit on the cap that will allow our mason jar to light up and come to life. First, separate the two parts of the cap. Taking the flat piece, I'm starting out by tracing out the path of the copper tape. We are making a parallel circuit, so as per the name, two pieces of copper tape will be parallel to each other, one connecting to the positive side of the LED stickers and the positive side of the battery, and the other one connecting to the negative side of the LED stickers and the negative side of the battery. To keep track of which piece of copper tape will connect to the positives and which one will connect to the negatives, I'm labeling the outside one with a plus and the inside one with a minus. Next, I'm going to continue drawing my copper tape paths to the other side of the cap and label the other side with positive and negative ends as well. If you have a one-piece cap, this will still work the same way, but you'll just have to wrap everything around the inner rim of your cap and then continue it on the outside and onto the top of the cap. Now before we finish drawing the circuit, we're going to make a battery housing. Cut out a rectangular piece of cardstock and fold it twice to create a bookcase shape to make sure that the battery can fit inside comfortably. Now glue it onto the cap so that it opens towards where the copper tape is coming from. Label the flat side with a plus and the flap with a minus. Now we can finish drawing the paths of the copper tape to the battery. It's kind of hard to see, but with the minus side, I'm drawing the path so that it comes around the battery housing and then back over the flap from the other side. This way, when the battery goes inside, it will make contact and complete the circuit. Now that we're done drawing out a blueprint for our circuit, we're going to stick down a layer of washi tape where our copper tape is going to go, so that the metal cap does not contact the conductive tape and mess with the circuit or short circuit it. You can also use painter's tape, but I like to use washi tape because it allows you to still see the path you drew earlier for the copper tape, which will come in handy later on. If you have a plastic or non-metal cap, you don't need to do the washi tape step. It's a bit difficult to get the tape to follow the circular shape of the cap, but I'm basically folding the tape back on itself and re-guiding it to go in a slightly new direction each time. This way, it eventually creates a round shape. I'm following the washi tape along the copper tape paths all the way to the negative and positive sides of the battery housing. Now, I'm basically going to do the same thing on top of the washi tape with the fabric tape, just following the two separate paths. Also, note that I'll use fabric and copper tape interchangeably because they're used for the same purpose in our case, and it really depends on what you have. Since I used washi tape, I can still see the two lines I drew for the fabric tape earlier, which is just a helpful template. Make sure that there's enough space between the two pieces of copper or fabric tape so that the two ends of the LED stickers can make contact with both pieces later on.
I'm also cutting a small piece of washi tape to put over the rim of the cap so that it doesn't make contact with the outer rim later when you screw it on. Now it's time for the LED stickers. Depending on how large your cap is and how bright you want your mason jar to be, you can use anywhere between two to seven LED stickers. I'm going to be using six in my example today. I'm trying my best to space them out evenly, making sure that the negative side of the light, which is the pointy side, matches up with the negative line of the copper tape, and the positive side of the light, which is the flat side, matches up with the positive line of copper tape. Now we're going to put the battery in the battery housing, making sure that the positive side of the battery is facing down, and check to make sure that the LED stickers light up. If one of your lights is not turning on or is just flickering, which is not uncommon, it means that you probably just have to push it down a little bit firmer or readjust it to a new location on your two lines of copper tape. Now for the final step, we're going to incorporate the pressure sensitive plastic, which will allow us to dim the LED stickers on and off. If you don't have the pressure sensitive plastic, that's okay too. You'll just have an on off mechanism rather than a dimming one, which is super cool too. Back to the pressure sensitive plastic though, it's one of my favorite Chibitronics products, and it's so cool how it works. The plastic sheet basically acts as a mediator of electrical flow between the two parts of the circuit. Here, I'm going to be placing it between the battery and one piece of copper tape. The plastic contains conductive particles that have the ability to let different amounts of electricity flow through the plastic, depending on how close together the particles are to one another. In a resting state with no pressure, the conductive particles are far from each other and don't conduct much electricity, resulting in the LED stickers being off. However, when pressure is applied, the conductive particles move closer to each other and allow more electricity to flow through, resulting in a brighter light. The harder you press, the closer the conductive particles are to one another and the brighter the light becomes. It's super cool how this pressure sensitive plastic works. To find the right size for the plastic, cut it about the size of the battery housing and then trim off a tiny edge on all four sides. I like to stack two pieces on top of each other because it creates a better dimming effect. After you've inserted the pieces of pressure sensitive plastic to make sure they fit, you're going to add foam tape on the four corners of the battery housing to keep it from adding any additional pressure to the pressure sensitive plastic and accidentally turning your LED stickers on. Depending on how thick your foam tape is, you might have to add a few layers like I'm doing here. Then, peel off the foam tape backing, stick down your two pieces of pressure sensitive plastic, and then stick down the top of your battery housing. You might have to play with it a little bit to make sure that the pressure sensitive plastic doesn't press down on the battery in its resting state and defaults to the off position. Once that's done, screw the cap onto the jar and see your entire scene come to life. Great job! For a final optional step, you can use a piece of fabric and ribbon to cover up the circuitry on the top of the cap. I like doing this because it gives it a cleaner finish, but it's totally up to you. After doing this, you're done! I hope you enjoyed learning how to make these light up mason jar crafts with me. Here are a few other examples that I made. This first one was made in a bigger mason jar with a plastic cap. In this case, the washi tape was not necessary, but I added it just to practice folding it before making this video for you guys. I made a forest scene in this one using a sloth and two adorable hedgehogs. I also used green LED stickers in addition to white ones to give it a green undertone and make it look more forest-like. This next one's for you Star Wars lovers out there. My little brother loves Star Wars, and so I made this one for him. As you can see, Luke and R2-D2 are just Lego figures, which shows how you can really use any small trinkets or toys that you have lying around in your house. I added an additional circuit on the back of the jar behind the two sets of tattooing so that they light up orange, and there's a separate button for this behind the jar. On the cap of the jar, I used white and orange LED stickers to give it even more of an orange glow. I also used dirt on the bottom for this, which turned out looking a lot better than I thought it would. So that's another easy base material you can use in addition to things like moss or rocks that you can find outside. This cap also was one piece, so I just wrapped the washi tape around the inside and back around the outside like I explained earlier. And finally, for one of my favorite ones, 
this colorful glittery bunny silhouette mason jar. This one was so much fun to make and it's really easy to get this dreamy iridescent effect using glitter. I used green, blue, and pink Tributronics LED stickers on the top to give it a multicolored look and used my Cricut machine to cut out these black bunny vinyl silhouettes. You can also just cut something out of black cardstock. For the glittery look, I coated the inside with clear Elmer's glue using a paintbrush and then poured white glitter inside, capped it, and rotated it around. It's up to you how much glitter you want to add, but I definitely added a good amount to get it fully coated. You can also always pour out the excess glitter. I'm Taryn with Crafty Karma, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and follow me on my socials for more craft tutorials. See you soon!